The first look on the Monarch product was just released around six hours ago. It's currently January 22nd, 2021, and I'm Bronson, and I wanted to give you my thoughts and, and how I feel about this this new information that we've been giving in, in a form of, of six pictures on the on the interwebs about flesh and blood. And this is just, just my perspective about how I feel about it at this current time. January 22nd, 2021, and, and, and giving you a look at that. So in the future, hey, you know, if you wanted to know what it was like, how, how people were feeling out there, yeah, th this is kind of a, a glimpse back in time. Now, I want to start off and say, <laughs> oh my gosh, uh, this this totally blew my mind. I mean, and this is what they kind of had to do, in my opinion. Legend Story Studios did have to do something this epic where it was a battle of light and dark and just some epic proportions because it's been said so many times by so many different people and content creators including myself i'm i'm to blame as well you can put me in the hat of of people who have been just hyping the heck out of monarch and saying that this is the big deal this is the big thing and and the reason why is because we've been communicated that We've been communicated that so many times from Legend Story Studios in the last, let's say, three to six months. Six months is really far back. You know, you'd have to find a really good clip to really see some some Monarch hype, you know, bushled in there. But in the last two to three months, man, the, the Monarch hype has been very, very large. I mean, it, it sold out in Team Covenant in December 2020. It sold out pretty much everywhere in December 2020, and uh, yeah, it was very rare to pick up. And only now, you know, we finally get some some artwork and some interesting tidbits of what this product is going to be like, which is hilarious because it, it sold out before we could even get a glimpse of what it could possibly be. <laughs> so I I just I just think it's nuts. And and so far today I. I saw this release around six hours ago. I've only talked to AJ from Adventure Co. Gaming. I'll put a link down below to his channel. I talked to him from my drinking with Bronson. And then I've talked to Kale from Dead Summer Art. I'll put a link to his channel below. He is an awesome guy. And he is he's the smartest guy for the lore for Flesh and Blood. If you want to learn more about the lore. And honestly, man, with Monarch, there's going to be a lot of amazing lore. And this, this game is really going to reveal it to are us really honestly because they named their company legend story studios for a reason man there, there's a story here there's something being told and and the artwork for this is just amazing i mean let me focus on the artwork for a bit so you know, you know i'll look at but you can follow along on your own computers and download the the pdf image of these you know angels and demons battling it's it's nuts man i just I love this artwork, man. Carlos, man, you, you killed it with this. So the, the initial thing that I'll say is that everything has wings. <laughs> I noticed, man, either you have, you know, the light wings or you have the, the demon looking wings here uh, that could hint to a potential mechanic in the game for Monarch. Uh, that That's my, my first impressions of this kind of thing is, is maybe that's going to be more of a focus, especially because I see cavalry. I see a lot of cavalry on on both sides with horses. So maybe being on horseback, maybe that's a a different type of of mechanic. Essentially, with flying as well. You know, maybe if you're up in the air, then melee heroes cannot attack you. But then when you go back down to the ground, then you can be attacked. Maybe maybe it's something where you are invulnerable for a turn or two if you're flying. If you are being attacked like let's say if if Dorinthy is trying to attack you and you you have wings and you flew up for a turn then Dorinthy can't attack you but if you are let's say Azalea or if you are you know Viserai with the the rune chance any any damage that is range can attack you and and I've said in the past that Welcome to Wrath was a lot of melee and then Arcane Rising was a lot of ranged and then maybe this is the flying type architect. I, 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 I'm kind of thinking there. I, I thought before it was going to be more healer and tank focused. I'm still kind of on that vibe. But but maybe it's something different. Maybe it's this flying or or movability type class that is very visual. And, and that would kind of make sense because, you know, Welcome to Wrath are very just 
ninja is very movable in a sense, but they're all just people on the ground who are just attacking things in their face. And then Arcane Rising is a bunch of people who are firing stuff from afar for the most part. And then maybe Monarch is more... These are more vigil type attacking units that did attack either with flying or or with cavalry. That'd be that'd be very interesting. But what's important to note too is is in this image, right? In in the artwork for Monarch that was released uh, earlier, is that it looks like they're all coming together. But then there's this big circle with flesh and blood, and it looks like some sort of portal. Maybe these things are getting sucked into Wraith is my my initial thing maybe there's some other realm other than wraith and and in D D, i've i've talked with kale from dead summer art and, and we've talked about planes planar existences in in D D. maybe that's kind of what this deal is it's it's another plane of existence the the this other realm and, and maybe there's two realms of light and dark who, who knows but it's just very very fascinating but man the, the artwork is just <laughs> is just amazing and it's epic and like i said earlier this is what needed to happen if it was like you know i don't know sea creatures like dolphins versus zebras or some some lame ass thing i don't think that people would be very happy i think that legend story studios needed to do something this epic because they've been hyping this up for so long and you know as you see in the back here uh i have the booster boxes and you know welcome to wrath is very you know, dark, and then you go to Arcane Rising, which is more purple, more lighter, and then you have Crucible of War that, that's light, and this is very light. This is, so it's really, it seems like it's gearing up towards this, and, and James White has said many times in the past that, that we've heard of it, he always had envisioned it, Welcome to Wrath, Arcane Rising, Crew, and Monarch, so, yeah, it seems like this is the war, the war of the light versus the darkness, and the the image that we've been given for this set is just jaw dropping. I'm 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 more than pleased and more than <laughs> more than hyped for this game, even more than I was. And I, I, I did I didn't think I could be any more hyped, but uh I'm really interested in what's to come for this game because every time they just keep pushing the notch up and up and up and it really will be interesting how this plays out. And another thing I'll note is in the center of the image, you have the the dark and the light, and it looks like the, the dark is holding this, this staff, and that looks like it's coming from Demonostri. And then the sword, that, that looks like a Solana-type thing. So it's, it's, it's very... It's very big, man. And another thing is having four new hero classes. Let's talk about that. So let's talk about the the website other page the one that has the product assets what i have to tell you man is i i did think before in the past i hope i said it in a video but i did think there was going to be four new hero classes i didn't know there was going to be like a dark and light theme that seems insane it looks like there's going to be two light heroes and two dark heroes from what i'm looking at it looks like there's a dark box and a light box i think that's pretty uh, self-explanatory there but i just didn't think that it was it was going to be th this big and it looks like it's going to be an all-out world war and it says official release date is april 30th 2021 i guess preview season is april 6th that'll be cool and hopefully i'll get the uh guardian shield <laughs> what is the spoiler card so I, I can just revive my my old video and, and repost it but uh uh, it'll be interesting to see that uh, release weekend when they're showing all the spoilers, man. I love that kind of stuff. I, I didn't in the past, but I, I, I'm really looking forward to it now. I can tell you that much. I am, I'm extremely hyped for this, and it's a lot of eyes on it. And I just love the ver verbiage, man, that Legend Story Studios does to pepper in, to, to really bring you in to the artwork. And they say, darkness, the canvas of the universe, light, the brushstroke of creation. Very smart, Ellis. That's very, very subtle there. A forbidden power hungers to eclipse existence, wiping the canvas clean. The soul of wrath stands resolute, 
a ray of hope to the artisans of civilization. So I guess the artisans of civilization are just the regular average Joes like Bronson. They're, they're just their normal guys in their normal rooms in Wraith. And then it looks like the, the light and the dark people are just really powerful beings like celestials possibly. Uh, Kale from Dead Summer Art talked a lot about the, the celestial beings like uh, that are that are on certain cards like Enlightened Strike. Maybe these people are part of that extra realm. Maybe that's a possibility. Um, but but a lot of stuff's in the dark. And I want to, I really want to harp on the fact that it's going to be crazy with this product. I I, I want to move to the product side. I, I don't know if, if I'm going to get too much of this. I, I don't know what's going to happen with distribution and whatnot. I have every faith in Legend Story Studios, but at this point, everyone's thinking that this product is just going to be gone from shelves and no one's going to be able to play the game for, for a little bit, especially the first edition product. And another big thing to note is they said that the Unlimited set is going to be released, I believe, three weeks or four weeks after the initial uh, first edition wave and yeah and i don't know about that you know i i would love to speculate and say how this is right or wrong or how it's good or bad but at the end of the day i'm just a normal guy in a normal room and legend story studios has been killing it so i i think that they have this under their belt i i'm really wondering what's going to happen in, in the secondary market and then how people are going to react. I just don't want to say it at this time, but it's just going to be a bloodbath. It's going to be utter insanity, uh, especially after they release this picture. I mean, it's already sold out. <laughs> are people are people going to be pre buying other people's pre-orders? Like, oh, you pre-ordered it for $100? i will buy your pre-order for $300. It's a pre-order of a pre-order. I, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know how people currently, after seeing this image, are going to get in this. Uh, they're going to do back-end deals. Man, it, it's... Uh, it's really, really great for the game. And, and I want to sum up that my uh, feelings are that this is what they need. That this is what Legend Story Studios needs for their product. And what's very interesting is it seems like in the, in the snippets of, of the hero decks, it says that each hero class in this new, these new decks that they're making for Blitz uh, each has like a new mechanic that we don't know about. And, and I will say that I know Kale from Dead Summer Art, we had a conversation. I, I'm, I'm plugging him a lot because I, I always want to give credit where credit is due. But he thought that the Monarch product was going to have a lot more to do with the graveyard. And I'm telling you, man, I think that that's going to happen with, with those, you know, the, the darkness heroes and the darkness cards i mean that that's a pretty sure bet man the darkness graveyard i mean that makes sense and and maybe we'll see the same thing for the the light cards maybe they'll deal more with the banish zone maybe that that will take into effect or maybe you could play cards from the graveyard or play cards from the banish zone depending on what you are if you're dark you play cards from the graveyard like a flash effect and then if you are light you play cards from the banish zone after you banish them there so um i and you would play them as instants possibly who knows and this is all speculation at the end these, these are just my thoughts after analyzing the, the game in its entirety for a little over three months at this point but I'm just really excited. I'm really excited. And, and it's late at night, so that's why I'm not yelling as much. And I'm trying to keep my voice down a little bit. But I, I'm i just, I'm so excited for this game. This, this, is, this is amazing. And I want to stress out there that Flesh and Blood is a game to be adventured in and discovered. And it's great seeing these little tidbits of the game and having everybody come on board and just say, hey, what's happening here? <laughs> what does this mean? I speculate this, I speculate this, and predict this. It's, it's a game that doesn't just come out and say, I am a tomato. They say, no, 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 no. Legend Story Studios doesn't say that about Flesh and Blood. You know what they say? I have reddish pigment, and I have greenish leaves. What am I? And then it, and it makes you think, and you're like, oh, could they be an apple? Could they be some some pear shaped fruit that they got painted red? Yeah, or are they are they a tomato? You know, they don't say 
what they specifically are. They give you a little tidbit or they give you a, a piece of the pie and they make you fill in the gaps and, and make you think about the game. And, and, and that sense of discovery is, is, is really important and, and it makes people invested in this game. It's, it's definitely made me invested. And I want to emphasize to anyone out there in the future, current, past, present, is that if you look at flesh and blood, it's something to be discovered. Don't take what I say and just take it for face value. Really form your own opinions and thoughts and ideas, whatever time period you are in flesh and blood, because it's a beautiful game. And and there's, there's a lot to be looked into, and there's so much that is really thought-provoking. And I can't wait for this set to be released. It is going to be amazing. And I, I'm just, I'm just, I didn't think I could get any more hyped, but, but I, but I'm running another hype level. I'm, I'm drinking the most amount of Kool-Aid for this game. Cause it's just, it's so flipping amazing. And I really am looking forward to the future. So, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching. Take care.